this event went way beyond where we expected it to go. And we're so appreciative of you all being here tonight. So I want to move the program along because I think you're going to be entertained. And I think you're going to see that this is a very special night. Thank you for being here to honor one of the most influential men um, that I personally know. Now, I realize that may say more about me than it does Jack, but still, <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's true. Okay. So, I, I stand to offer a toast, not a roast, as delicious as that might be. Uh, uh, in my faith tradition, um, uh, we have a thing called the seal of confession. The seal's inviolate. Um, and while there's much, oh, so much, I could say about Jack. <laughs> Too often I would be skirting a line and I, that I'm not allowed to cross, so I'm, I'm not going there. Um, uh, as some of my clergy friends would say, better saved than sorry. <laughs> um, okay. And while there were some times when he and I flirted with excommunication, again, you're going to have to get me a lot drunker to tell you about that. <laughs> so a toast, a toast, a toast. I was always curious when we would get together, we would take pictures. And for some reason, we always had to take two pictures with two cameras, one being my grandmother's and one being my grandfather's. Now, I've never asked why that's the case. Because I thought it was a little weird. But I can, I've always imagined that the story went a little something like this. One day, Nana said to Papa, why do you always have to take the picture? To which my grandfather responded, because you don't do it right. <laughs> <laughs> to which my grandmother, being the strong-minded woman that she is, said, well, fine, I'll get my own camera. <laughs> and from that day forward, there were two pictures taken <laughs> at every family event. These are hard acts to follow. Lucas, fantastic job. Wonderful to hear a grandson talk about his papa and to give us a picture of the person that we know is in there, but we really don't see. <laughs> <laughs> it is also difficult to follow a lying Episcopal priest. <laughs> we all witnessed him saying in front of all of us, He's not going to roast him. <laughs> and the very first story was a roast, and not a toast. So that is difficult to follow, but I will try to do my best. We know him behind his back as a bulldozer, gruff, not taking no for an answer. And even if we talk to Jesus or to God, we will answer the phone when Fishman calls. My now, Jack Fishman. Contrary to him is his beautiful, sensitive, graceful, charming wife, Nancy. <laughs> and, and she makes it so much easier to accept Fishman. <laughs> On one of those international recruiting trips to England, um, an incident occurred. And it is disputed to this day. But I would submit to you that I was a part of saving Nancy Fishman's life. And I would say that she would agree with that. Jack never has accepted that. Thank you. Rick. We were in a cab in London, England. Uh, it was one of those black cabs that has seats that face each other. Myself, Jack, Nancy, and a chamber official. Nancy was sitting in front of me, and the traffic was terrible. And all of a sudden, there was a violent breaking. Uh, it, it threw all of us all over the back of the cab. And when things settled, Nancy was in my arms. <laughs> she had fell forward. I saw her falling forward. So I opened my arms, <clears throat> caught her gently placed her back in her seat. Jack said, wait, just what's happened here? What has happened here? He said, after this accident, I look up and Nancy's in your arms. And 
I said, I saved her life, Jack. <laughs> so he began to tell the story. If someone is, or something is falling towards you, in Jack's words, you do this. <laughs> and he said, it was clear to me that David was lying because he was <laughs> So it will always exist as a point of controversy, but, but I have Nancy on my side. With that. Now, the thing about Jack that's also very, very interesting, he never gives up on a prospect, and we always have our debriefs when we lose them. We had one food company from Minnesota. They were coming to town, and we knew what they were going to do. And one of our luncheons, and I don't know how many times Nancy Fishman had meals that she had to put aside or warm up because there always would be a prospect to come up. But this one particular time, the Minnesota folks, they're sitting there asking. I, we knew what they were going to ask. They were going to ask for free land. And I made the statement, well, there's no free lunch. And later on, about a week later, we're evaluating what happened. And Jack said they weren't happy. You said there's no free lunch. I'm glad somebody else wore the damn black hat this time instead of you wearing a white hat. So, <laughs> But the thing about Jack is he never gives up, never gives up, never gives up. It's funny how you get older and they say more than 30 years. It's been quite a few more than 30, right? The very first day I walked across the stage of the University of Tennessee when I graduated, got in a car, drove to Middle Tennessee, and started to audit the Tullahoma News. From that day forward to this day now has been hell. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to talk about passion, now, they've talked about this bloodhound over here. I can talk about passion. Go on vacation before cell phones and laying out in the sun, kicking back, maybe having a nice drink, and have the hotel administration come out. There's a Mr. Fishman on the phone for you. <laughs> what? I'm on vacation. He needs to speak to you. Great. Have you ever done that? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> passion. Absolute passion. I'm telling you, Lucas, great job. Great job. But let me tell you, he's not Ward Cleaver. <laughs> no way. Instructions. Roland? How many times will he give you the same instructions? And if, you're, if you turn your head, I mean, you know what it, Okay, you've already said it, Jack. You've already said it. You turn your head or you're doing something else, he gets louder. He'll get louder and tell you, and I told you, and get your attention. So you make sure you get the instructions. But I will say this. We wouldn't have three industrial parks, a mall, and so many other things. <clears throat> without Jack Fishman. That's the honest truth. Tennessee's got 95 counties, folks. Why aren't they doing what Morristown is doing? No, we're not a Nashville. But we're Morristown. Look at the other communities our size. What makes the difference? No, it's not Jack Fishman. It's you. It's, it's you, the people in our community, that give their time and their energy and their love for other people. I could sit here and call the names of the things that each of you have done. Some of the things you've heard tonight are true and, and well, you know. <laughs> But I want you to understand, people or what matter. We happen to be in the newspaper business and we work every day to try to satisfy a basic 
human craving. And that is to have a positive community and a sense of usness in our community about this place that we live. What we do to build a final education system in our community, whether it's K through 12, the community college, or our applied technology school, it is the future of what we spend, time that we give to build the youth that are going to follow us. Let me tell you, folks, we ain't going to be here much longer. But those kids over in that grammar school, they're going to be here a long time. And if we don't give them the opportunity and all that they need in this world today to have their life and their dream, we're not doing our job. You people do that in this community, and that's the reason that we have what we have.